Okay. Over oh, here, I mean, I made the background. <sighs> we made the background. I mean, you put some mud on it. <laughs> Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the Reptilian Den. I'm Elle. And I'm Den. And this is Elle's Reptiles. On this week's Wednesday video, we, we are showing you guys in depth how we built Sterling's background in his new vision cage, his new bioactive vision cage, and we're super excited about it. Before we get started showing you guys how we did that, a huge thank you again to visionproducts.us for sending us the tank for Sterling. We could not be happier with this tank and Sterling is super happy with this tank. If you want a vision cage, a front opening vision cage for your animal, Vision Products is an awesome place to get one of those. Thank you again so much to Vision Products. Thank you, Vision Products. Let's get started. Here we're taking some driftwood that we found at a river a while ago and it has been sanitized. We're just cutting it to fit so that way we can attach it to the walls. This will provide him with a cool little climbing area. And then I'm just cleaning out this giant mess that was made. It is super important that you are starting out with a clean tank. And the way that we like to make sure to do this is vacuuming out all the debris and then wiping it all down with alcohol. This just ensures that again, it is super, super clean so that the foam and everything is going to stick to this tank the way that we want it to stick. Next up is the spray foam. The spray foam is very important that you shake it up. I think it says for a minimum of 60 seconds, but you wanna make sure to shake this up really good. We are using great stuff spray foam in the red can. Shaking it up basically is going to ensure that it doesn't come out as a liquid. Please keep in mind that this does expand a lot. So you're not gonna go crazy with the spray foam here, but you do want to make sure that everything is covered. I really enjoy using the spray foam. It, uh creates an uneven texture, which is really nice for making it look very natural. Oh, when doing this though, I, I recommend that you probably wear gloves because when it gets stuck to your hands, it's, it's a little bit of a pain to get off. As you are putting in that spray foam before things dry, you're gonna go ahead and push those pieces of wood or pots or whatever it is that you're putting into the background. You're gonna go ahead and put that up. You need some way to hold this in place because spray foam is not sticky when it is first applied. The hardening of it afterwards and expansion is what makes it sticky. So if you use some kind of string or some sort of anchor or something to hold it up, that is going to make life a whole lot easier for you. And in this tank, unlike our last tank that we did, we actually decided to do the walls of this one as well, just because it makes the whole entire thing look a little more natural. So I am doing the same thing that I did on the back and just spray foaming in the walls. And you can see here post expansion how sturdy this piece of wood is and how sturdy everything is being held in place. We are not gonna have to worry about this going anywhere. Here I'm just using a box cutter to uh, cut down the foam to kind of give it a little bit more shape. Using a foam cutter might be easier on this, but ours died. We carved away at this quite a lot because we wanted the walls to actually be as thin as possible just to make sure that Sterling had the maximum amount of room. And now we are preparing to make this background look more like a naturalistic background. Make sure you are wearing gloves, super important unless you wanna make a giant mess. We're also going to need some sort of cocoa fiber bedding and black silicone. You can use clear silicone for this, but it just looks better overall if you use black, just because it all blends together much better. The process of this is a super easy one, but it is a super time consuming one. And this is going to take quite a lot of silicone. It took. I think six or seven tubes of silicone for this entire tank. You are basically just putting on giant globs of silicone, making sure to cover all of the foam, get all of those crevices, and then you're just throwing dirt on top. Make sure that that cocoa fiber is completely dry or else it's not gonna stick correctly, and then kind of pack it down into the silicone, again, to make sure that it sticks correctly. This is something that needs to be done either in a wide open space or outdoors because silicone is very strong. It also is advised to use a mask when you're doing this because inhaling this 
stuff hurts. And as you can see, I am doing this in very small sections. That is another important thing about this is to do it in small sections. Silicone itself is not very fast at curing, but it does start to thicken up rather quickly. And once it thickens up, it's going to be a lot harder to spread and it can make actually packing the dirt in a little bit more difficult too. In this section here, I walked away from the silicone for a minute and I just completely forgot what I was doing and it did start to thicken up some. And so spreading this was not easy and I had a bit of a harder time getting it to stick in this section. So make sure you are working in small sections pretty quickly. And then of course, as you go, you can tilt the entire tank up and kind of beat on the back of it a little bit just to get that extra dirt off so you can actually see what you're doing and make sure that you don't miss spots. And this is it. This is the final product. I have really enjoyed doing backgrounds like this lately. I feel like it makes the entire thing look a lot more naturalistic. You have a 3D background as opposed to just a flat background or no background. And to me, it just kind of makes the entire bioactive setup come together more because it looks more like a slice of forest as opposed to just some plants thrown into tanks, which plants thrown into tanks is fine. I have multiple tanks set up that way now, but this is definitely my new favorite way of doing these tanks. And of course, if you are doing this for a reptile that climbs, this is going to provide a fantastic climbing space for that animal. And that's it. And we love the way that it turned out. We stuck that driftwood right in that background. And so that way it protrude outwards and attached to the top and Sterling loves it. And it was a lot of fun. Again, thank you to Vision Products for sending us that cage. Sterling has climbing room and stuff now. So super excited about that. And if you like this video, don't forget to like this video subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so that way you can get all of our future awesome content that is coming out we have the best content not exaggerating thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you have a fantastic day bye, bye. yeah okay this is l's reptiles okay you came to the right place if you were looking for l's reptiles is this just you today listen i'm, I'm a little delirious all right i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> i'm struggling okay does that mean that loud noise mean? No. Yours is the tiny little mumble that I have to always fix. So I just need to talk loud. Yeah. That's too loud. Let's get started. Finally speak up. Let's get started. Shh. Huh? Like I'm just looking over there just thinking about life. Um What's wrong with your life? Nothing. Say it, try again. Are you questioning your life right now? <laughs> just say it again. What, what am I saying? Let's get started. Let's get started. I'm questioning your life. <laughs>